Ruby is a show that I have a giant love-hate relationship with, because there are some volumes that I absolutely love, and other volumes, eh, not so much. So I wanted to briefly go over each volume and decipher when the show started to fall off. Ruby Volume 1, despite its questionable graphics, I think it was a great introduction to the show. It introduced us to some incredible characters, such as Ruby Rose, Blake Belladonna, Yang Xiaolong, Wai Shni, John, Nora, Rin, <laughs> Pira, and some not great characters, even though the finale left a lot to be desired. Wait, what? She was a furry this entire time? I agree with Weiss. I wouldn't trust a furry either. Liars, thieves, and murderers! I still think the first volume was a really fun way to start the show, and oh boy, it just went up from there. Volume 2. It starts off with two characters we have never seen before. Green Hair Lady, so she probably uses TikTok, and Quicksilver, who never skips leg day. We also get this awesome food fight scene with the stellus bread to ever exist. Mmm, delicious. Oh, also, I feel like I should mention that every character has a superpower, kinda like in My Hero Academia, but without the Japan language. Volume 2 also gives us some spectacular fight scenes, a dog, and gives us the epicest teacher to ever exist. And I'm obviously talking about the coffee mad lad, Professor Ublik. There is also a prom that brings back not-so-fun memories. Just ask her to dance. The worst she can say is no. <laughs> volume 3. I think Volume 3 is the best of the entire show. The volume starts off with Ruby at her mother's grave, talking to her for some reason. Ruby, she can't hear you. She's dead. And then we find out a tournament against all the schools is going on, which has never happened in another show, ever. Team Ruby wins their first match, because obviously, and Team Junipur Jun Jun also wins their first battle. And we finally get to see the drunken Uncle Crow. He was drunk. He's always drunk. And Winter. Weiss's sister. And after that, Yang breaks some dude's leg like a stick. <laughs> and Ironwood's like, yo, you can't be going around snapping people's walking parts. And it turns out the headmaster of the school has a child imprisoned in a basement under the school. Huh? But anyways, everything starts going downhill fast. Pira murders a robot girl. Jean gets shoved into a locker by Pira, and then Mrs. Meanie kills Pira, which I mean, she kinda deserves murder and bullying? Shame on you, Pira. Oh, also, this dude cuts Yang's arm off, perhaps so she stops breaking people's legs. <laughs> but yeah, all jokes aside, this was definitely my favorite volume. Volume 4. This might be a hot take, but this volume is just as good as volume 2, if not more. We are introduced to this character, who seems to be playing Stardew Valley in real life. We also get to meet Weiss's butler with a multi-personality disorder. I always find he keeps his study dreadfully cold. I think it's to balance out all his hot air. Crow gets stabbed by the Joker. <laughs> Wanna know how I got this tell? Yang is a very big Debbie Downer this volume just because she lost her arm. Like, just get another one. Wait, you did? And you're still sad? Bruh. We also get a lot of backstory for human Pinkie Pie and Rin. Oh, also Blake. She meets her family, so that's pretty cool. Apparently she comes from a long line of furries. But yeah, it's a pretty good volume, if I do say so myself. Volume 5. I would rather go watch Paint Dry for 38 hours than watch this garbage ever again. 
Volume 5 is the most boring thing I have ever seen in my life. I did enjoy Jean having a literal mental breakdown though. That was pretty fun. Oh, with that damn smile on your face! Well, I'm the Joker, baby! <laughs> I think this volume is really where the show started to fall off. Because I don't think the writers understand what the viewers want. The viewers do not want a bunch and a bunch and a bunch of episodes of people just talking. They want action-packed episodes. And this volume, it ain't it, Chief. Volume 6. It's a step up from Volume 5, but that's not saying much. I think there are a pretty big number of things wrong with this volume. Like, why even have Grandma Katara in the show? Like, that's a genuine question. She adds nothing. Oh, by the way, remember Ozpin? The dude that had a kid trapped in his school basement? Yeah, him. He's inside this dude now. Pause. And for some reason, the team decides to start hating Ozpin. And then we get some backstory that is told in a really long story. So I'll shorten it. Good. Good. Love. Death. Sadness. Evil. Good. Alive. Dead. Alive. Dead. Stab. Anger. Genocide. Scary lady. Written by Dr. Seuss. Oh, also, Catwoman and the One-Arm Warrior absolutely murder this man. Rest in peace. Welp, nothing else interesting happens in this volume. I would give it like a 5 out of 10. Volume 7. Do you remember the robot lady that died in Volume 3? Well, she's back, baby, and better than ever. We are also introduced to the Aesops. The boy who cried wolf. The tortoise and the hare, Riot. Stiff legs, Lauren. Lucky Larry. And Vines. He looks pretty cool. I hope he doesn't die. We also get to see General Ironwood again, so that's pretty good. Oh no, what did they do to my boy's hair? And after that, Weiss's dad is like, I'ma smack you in the face. And I was like, nah fam, that's illegal. Shoot, you right. Then he leaves. Okay, so I just need to rant for a second here. Ruby and the gang consistently lie to Ironwood and leave out crucial information and then they're like, hey, we should just risk the entire kingdom's life for like 26 people. How am I supposed to be on Team Ruby's side? You'd be leaving Mantle to die. Yes, I would. Anyways, Ironwood and Watts, this dude, have a pretty swag fight. And at the end, Ironwood's like, Psh, skin, don't need it. And sadly, Lucky Larry gets killed by Scorpion. Not that scorpion, yep, that one. I feel like I should also mention this character, uh, like Rosie Robbins or whatever her name is. I honestly don't remember if she was so forgettable. I'm gonna be honest, this volume is probably the most forgettable out of the entire series. I honestly forgot that Lucky Larry was even a character and the only good part was the Ironwood and Watts fight. <laughs> volume eight. Remember the robot lady that died in Volume 3 and came back in Volume 7? Yeah, she did. Vine also got killed. But wait, couldn't he have just done that without being in the circle himself? Also, this dude, Hazel, has been a meanie weenie the entire show, but he finally decides to become a good guy and immediately dies. Also, most of the main characters fall into the Minecraft End Abyss. Should have packed some Ender Pearls. I don't know, this volume is very hit or miss. I really like some aspects of it, like Watts roasting the Pure Pulverizer. Can't just be strong, you have to be smart! Can't just be deserving, you have to be worthy! But all you have ever been is a bloody migraine! Oh! And that they treat Weiss's brother like an actual human being. But there are also some aspects that I really don't like. Like how they just made Ironwood completely unhinged. Like bruh, this is not Ironwood. I'm also not a fan of like any of the Team Ruby members this season. I find them all pretty annoying, honestly. Welp, 
That's all the Ruby volumes so far. Comment down below if I should make videos about the new volume when it comes out. So, what do I think of Ruby? Do I think it's good? Do I think it's bad? In all honesty, I think it's pretty mediocre. There are definitely some good characters and fight scenes, but the writing is just so eh that it's hard to get into the actual show, if that makes sense. Well, that's going to be the end of this video. This video took absolutely ages to edit, so it would mean a lot if you guys could hit the like button and subscribe if you did enjoy it. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.